And as demonstrators get ready to descend upon the G20 summit to rage against the establishment, heads of state might be getting ready to rage against each other. And at the forefront, the U.S. and China clashing already ahead of the meeting in Canada next week. Well, joining me now to talk more about the issue, author and investigative journalist Webster Tarpley. Hello. Hi, Webster. So next week, big summit, G20. Already we've seen China come out saying, don't discuss our currency, don't right. discuss revaluing it, this is not your business, this is a national sovereign issue. And then you have this letter from President Obama that it doesn't mention China, but it sure sounds like he's talking about him, talking about market-determined exchange rates and talking about how he's concerned about weak private sector uh, spending and heavy reliance on exports by some countries with already large surpluses. I mean, he's talking about China. China and Germany. Let's also point to them as a country with a big export surplus. Okay, well, let's talk about China first. So why is this currency issue being brought up again? Why is it being you know, politicized again, making a big splash about it ahead of this summit? And what's going to get done? The general idea is that Obama and Geithner and Summers have telegraphed their strategy. And if I can sum it up in the broad sense, it's to keep the euro down, the renminbi up, to keep the Germans out, and to keep derivatives in command of everything. Now, specifically on, on China. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, Webster. Come on. I, I thought this was an administration that's trying to better regulate derivatives. No. And this is an administration that wants the yuan to appreciate, which is actually they that's what you're saying. They yeah, want the it up. But others are arguing that that's necessary as well. No, that's, that's uh, as the Chinese say, the Chinese are now very, very sensitive about this because they've got a strike wave going. Right? You have a whole series of strikes, wildcat strikes and other strikes that have broken out in factories run by Japanese, Taiwanese, and other companies all over China. The Chinese government knows that if they let the renminbi, the yuan, go up, then every, t every percentage point, every basis point that it goes up, they're going to be closing factories, increasing the social tension. So I cannot see how the Chinese are going to let themselves be bullied by Obama or anybody else in this situation. So what is this about for the Obama administration? Because in April, they didn't label China a currency manipulator. Treasury Secretary Geithner delayed that report, didn't come out with it. Why are they criticizing China about this again now? The goal of all of this is to direct the forces of the world economic depression against others. They're criticizing Germany, saying, you rely on exports too much, you have too much deflation, uh, you don't have enough internal consumption. So they want to make the euro weak, and at the same time, they want the, the, uh, the Chinese currency to go up so that this relieves pressure on the dollar. The ge general idea is to save the dollar, which is now in a, a pretty, pretty desperate straits. Well, isn't that everybody's uh, goal, kind of, to have their best interests in mind uh, when but they go not, into this? Not with this, uh, the methods used by the U.S. and the British. Look, the, in the first couple of months of this year, you had a big hostility, big acrimony between the U.S. and China, and right. we followed it. Then there was a period, a little bit of a honeymoon, where the U.S. seemed to lay off China, tried to be nice to them. My feeling is that they were trying to get the Chinese to dump the euro and go with the dollar. That is to say, stop uh, d diversifying into the euro. Well, but that's China the, is still the, one of the largest holders of the U.S. dollar and right, has the largest demand right. for the U.S. dollar. But you, when you have the front page stories in the London Financial Times that say, China is about to dump the euro, or Iran is about to dump the euro, or somebody else is going to dump the euro. You can see that there's a certain desire to get a panic going against the euro. So I think this is basically to keep China and Germany both off balance. Now, the real issue is this world economic depression. The International Labor Organization in Geneva just had their annual meeting at the end of May. Their figure is that the world unemployment is now 212 million people and it's gone up by 34 million in the course of 2008. Now, that's the official figure. Generally speaking, you can double that to get the real figure. That's certainly true here in the United States. When they say 15 percent, it's really more, uh, uh, 10 percent, it's really more like 17 percent. So it's practically twice as much. Um, what are you going to do about, uh, about this depression? Now, the Germans have... Well, it looks like the Obama administration has some plans. He wants people to regulate the financial institutions better. Uh, this is eyewash. It's not even worth going through. These are, these are throwaway lines. This is simply uh, eyewash or, or, or hogwash. The why, why is this hogwash? Because the Germans have, have concrete things that they've done, right? Ban certain kinds of derivatives. Ban credit default swaps. Those are the worst derivatives. Germans have done that. 
Obama has freaked out. They sent Geithner to try to get them to take it okay, back. Okay, but hold on. Also the Obama administration is pushing for uh, G20 partners to uh, better have stronger oversight of the derivatives are, market and says that both bills of the House and Senate are, 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 are tightening up on derivatives. What do you say to that? He's sabotaging, he's sabotaging the Blanche Lincoln. The only thing left in that bill that means anything is the Blanche Link Lincoln ban on banks trading derivatives and Rahm Emanuel is working night and day to get that taken back. The Germans are also... I know that. Because that's what's going on. Take it from me. Uh, <laughs> from from you, Webster. To, the Tobin tax on speculators. The Germans want to have that. U.S. and British freaked out. European Union wants to, wants to regulate hedge funds. U.S. completely freaked out about that. And then there's the question, how do you create jobs for 212 million people? Not with that stuff Obama says. So far, we've had the central banks lending money at 0% only to banks. Why don't we try something new? Let's have central banks lend money at zero percent to states, provinces, and cities, and let them build huge infrastructure, stuff like the Tennessee Valley Authority in the United States. This was a plan of the German trade unions in 1931 with the distinguished economist Wojtynski, and of course the whole New Deal, the TVA and other examples. Okay, well let's real quickly talk about jobs, because one of the things in this letter from Obama is he is clearly concerned over some of these cuts in spending and austerity measures in Europe, and that they are mm -hmm. going to slow down the global economic recovery. Some mm -hmm. believe that you need more government spending in order to generate growth, in order to get the economy me back on its feet. So, I mean, are they indirectly addressing jobs here? This, these are crocodile tears from Obama in this sense, that what Obama wants to do is basically his message to Germany is strangle your own exports so you soften the euro and the dollar can survive. Soften the euro? The euro has hit almost all-time lows. Yeah, but it's, it's survived now. The, the, what was, what was in, the, in the program was a blitzkrieg against the euro during the month of May, and it didn't work. So that part is broken down. Now, he's trying to... This is the old Carter Mondale locomotive theory of 1977. It's amazing how, how little they have that's new. The idea was make the Germans stimulate, make Europe stimulate, and that will take pressure off the U.S. dollar. That was Carter 1977, and by God, now it's Obama in the year 2010. So nothing new under the sun. All bankrupt. And in the meantime, the depression is getting worse. There are 212 million unemployed, and really twice that many. And they're not talking about job creation, credit creation, or a recovery program that could really get the world out of a depression. And uh, the Obama administration evidently concerned now about a double-dip recession themselves. Investigative journalist <laughs> Webster Tarpley Wayne in there.